everybody. I hope y'all are doing well. I hope y'all are having a good day today. Um, if you're new here, my name is Nydia and this is my channel about non-duality and the twin flame journey. I have my little dog here. Let me see if I can put her on the camera. There she is. She was just barking and running around so I thought I would put her in my lap and see um, if she calms down a bit. But anyhow, if you're new here and you like this sort of content, please subscribe to my channel. And if you're returning, welcome back and I hope you enjoy our chat today. So I just made a cup of apple cider here that I'm sipping on. So if you want to get yourself a cup of coffee, apple cider or your drink of preference so we can have a little chat here about those things that non-duality teachers and speakers rarely speak about. So a lot of times in the non-dual community and many of the questions and things that I get from people, um, they're all centered around emptiness. So more of the radical non-duality. So a lot of those speakers, they deny the self over and over again, just repeating that there is no self. There is no one to do anything. There is nothing to change. You aren't here. You were never born. You never died. All of these sorts of things that you hear over and over again in almost every non-dual speaker's videos. And while there is truth in that, and while that is seen, that is not everything. So you have may, maybe also heard about empty fullness or that it is everything and nothing at the same time. In my videos, you will find that I speak a little bit more about everything or the fullness of the emptiness more than the emptiness. So while radical non-duality speakers speak of the emptiness, there is also the fullness and it is two sides of the same coin or it is seamlessly the same okay so it's not two separate worlds two separate things it is the same thing yet for some reason a lot of the videos and things that you see online are all focused on emptiness and for the person that is trying to escape life escape themselves, escape something unpleasant that they're dealing with, especially let's say someone that deals with a lot of anxiety or um, depression, especially mental illness and things like that. That is actually a pretty attractive message that there is no self and there is nothing to do, nothing to plan, all of that. I mean, if you can see how that could be a positive thing to somebody who is very anxious and always you know stuck in the future or the past that can be an attractive message although it's talked about that this message is not attractive and there isn't anything to gain from it and there isn't anything to gain from it but for the person that is stuck in anxiety depression or something like that um, it is an attractive message because it means that they don't have to do any of that stuff anymore. And if they were to really believe that or experience that, then they wouldn't have um, or suffer from those sorts of ailments or mental illnesses. So that message can be attractive. And for the person, they will either hang on to it because of those reasons or because it just utterly confuses the mind how it is that someone is saying that there is no self, yet the person can clearly feel that they have a body, know that they were born from such and such hospital to their mother, and that they lead this life, and that they do live in the United States or wherever they live, even though this is all being denied by the speaker or the teacher, they are confused because it is their experience that they are in existence. So all of that's being denied just to deny the self, not that there is a body, that there are things to do like go to work, take care of family, all of these things that do happen. It's just to say you're not doing it. The person or the self that you think you are doesn't exist. That doesn't exist. Just what exists is life or whatever you want to call it, energy. It doesn't matter. Words are meaningless really. It is whatever is going 
um, and animating everything that is actually happening. It's not something separate that's animating this. It's not something that is going through us like that is a separate entity. It is literally just life happening, okay? So it can be, you have to pay attention very closely. It's not something separate, okay? So we're talking about not two, okay? Just one or nothingness. And I sometimes like to call it oneness. I sometimes call it um, nothingness. Sometimes I've called it God. Um, but it is nothing separate than what is here speaking to you now, what is on the other side of the camera watching this video. It is all the same. It is the same as this dog that's sitting on my lap or this couch I'm sitting on. So what I'm speaking of, even if I call it God, even if I call it oneness, even if I call it whatever, an energy, it is literally just what is happening. And there is only that. And it's not separate from anything. So when we're talking about empty fullness or um, everything and nothing, that's to say that there is no self here that is separate from anything that is doing this, you know, this, these actions, this life. It is just all happening together seamlessly. So that's what it's talking about. But what's not really talked about um, or explained or anything like that or even acknowledged in um, those radical non-duality meetings and whatever one-on-ones and things like that is that there is still fullness. And some of these speakers and teachers you will notice um, they may even appear like they have become zombies or maybe even ghosts or a shell of themselves in some way like are they even human anymore and I've heard that from um, people that have come to me and asked you know are these people even human anymore and yes they are human they are experiencing a human expression at this time um, but their level of reality, it's not that there's levels higher or lower or anything, just their current reality is that there is no self. And for some of those beings, there isn't, there isn't much going on. Like they don't have the need or feel the need to have free will or any of that stuff or to feel separate or do anything separate. They just don't have that experience. So there's some people that are very, very, um, had this realization and very, very much um, just in oneness at all times. And there's people that um, have this experience and maybe they call it a glimpse and they may know some of this or seen some of this and they're kind of in and out. Um, but generally when this is seen, it can't be unseen. So once it's, once it's seen, it can't be unseen. It's just... It, you it's like you get a new pair of glasses you see everything how it is now I haven't experienced a glimpse so I can't really say you know what that what that is exactly like if maybe there is some unseen or something that they're not seeing clearly still and it seems like that's what's being reported but I don't know uh, because that's not my experience so what I wanted to talk about um, here that's really not talked about in non-dual circles is accepting our reality so if you're watching these videos and you're hearing that there is no self there is only what is there is only what's happening you can't do anything about it there's nothing you can change nothing that you can work on nothing that you can obtain now while I will tell you that is true the reality is that if you believe that, and that's really not your belief or experience, you're going to suffer. So what can you do? Um, so what's not talked about is that each person is experiencing their own reality. So if your reality is that you feel that you do have free will, you do feel that you can do something, you do feel that you can work on things, then that's your reality. Why would you deny what is happening to you because of what somebody else is speaking about 
in these videos or whatnot. So if it's not your reality, that's not your reality. So there's no, there's no one that can tell you to accept or, um, or to do something different. You can't do anything different than what already is happening. So if your reality is that you feel that you have free will, it's going to be a situation where you're going to have to go through life feeling like you have free will until that, if it ever does, fall away or stops or whatever. So you must go with whatever is your reality. If not, you're denying what is. Your experience is completely perfect and meant to be. If you're experiencing so-called separation, what is the problem with that? Um, is it your thoughts? Is it, what is it? You know, so you have to examine all of that. But if your, your reality is that you experience separation, that's what's happening. You can't do anything to change that. You can watch these videos, you can do whatever you want to do. Um, since you do have the sense of free will, you will definitely feel like, okay, if I watch these videos and then I have this one-on-one -on -one and I do this and that and whatever, then I'm going to obtain this. If that's your reality, that's what's happening. And, you know, no one can change that. So that's what I wanted to speak of. Whatever your reality is, it is just that. It's that reality. Um, just on the other side of that, if you're experiencing no separation, that you don't have free will, that everything's just happening, then that's your reality. And that's what it is. One or the other is not better or worse. They are all happening. They are all needed. Um, that's just the way it is. It's when we resist or we want things to be a different way that we suffer. So if your reality is that you have free will, that's completely okay. You can still experience everything that someone who doesn't feel like they have free will experiences. And I will just tell you how. Um, it's not something that you can do necessarily. It's just something that happens and something that you are. So if you want to experience what is being experienced without the free will, without the sense of self, all it is is to be authentic to yourself. That's all it is. And you don't need to have free will or no free will or realization or awakening or any of that to be that. You already are that. You already are what you are. You're just not realizing or aware of that or accepting that or letting that flow. And it's not that you're doing it or not doing it, but you have the sense that you're doing this. You have the sense that you have free will. You have all that sense of ownership. And if you're feeling that, that's why you're feeling that you are separate, okay? Or that you are not already that. But you are already that, okay? And you don't have to brainwash or gaslight or whatever you call it to experience this. You don't have to tell yourself, oh, I'm not a person, I'm not a person, I'm not a self, I'm not a self, um, this isn't happening to me because I'm not a person. You don't have to do all of those mind mental games or even watch these videos or do anything. Regardless of if you feel that there's a sense of self or not, that doesn't matter. If you want to experience, let's say you're wanting the benefits of this, if that's what most people are looking for, is something to benefit from. You can't benefit from this. The only thing that will change, like I say, is being what you already are and recognizing what you already are, which is already what you are. So there's nothing that I can give or take away from you. What, what you have is already everything. So in order to recognize and do all that, that's not a prescription. That's not something that you can get from watching these videos. That's not even something you can get from the one-on-ones. That's just not it. What I'm speaking about is regardless of if you're going to realize this or not, you already are that. You already are everything that you want to be or not be or whatever. You already are that, but you're experiencing your reality 
Could be that you feel separate. Could be that you still feel that you have free will. Could be that you still identify as a you. And that's okay. You're no different than I am. The only difference that could be happening is that you're not being authentic to yourself and recognizing what and who you really truly are. And when you recognize that, you will be more authentic to yourself. You won't fall for manipulations. You won't um, try to be something that you're not. You won't feel guilty or shame or any of these things when you're being authentic to yourself because you'll be completely in line with whatever it is that you are and you'll be expressing that at all times. There won't be anything to feel sorry for. There won't be anything that can happen that would be not what you want. So you're going to always be authentic. If you're an authentic person, you're honest. You're working the type of job that suits you, not because whatever society wants or whatever, you're doing what suits you. You're not falling into manipulations of, you know, trying to get friends or trying to fit in somewhere that you shouldn't or, you know, trying to be or please someone or whatever for something. All of those things will fall away. You won't have anything in your life that you don't want because you'd be authentic to yourself and have, strangely enough, the self-love to stand up for whatever it is that you are. So that's what can happen um, after having this realization is that it's funny enough you realize that there is no self but then there's all this love for the self that you supposedly are. So this expression that you're appearing as, you love it. And you want it to be expressed completely truthfully, completely authentically. And that doesn't take a realization to realize. Maybe realizing that there is no self, maybe that, because that was something that, like, it, it was only a split second, but it's something that just gets cleared up. But if that never gets cleared up for you, it doesn't matter. You can still live like you have free will. You can still believe that you have free will. But... You must be authentic to yourself. You must know what you are, know what you're, who you are, what you stand for, what's your personality, what you like, don't like, what you accept, don't accept, what you believe, don't believe. And be authentic to that. And that'll be all you need to do. And that's, that's all there is. So you're not going to gain anything other than that from this message. Everything continues on the same. But when you're in alignment with what you truly are and you're expressing yourself authentically, um, even regardless, like I say, regardless of knowing if there's a self or not self, even if you haven't realized that internally and deeply, um, it doesn't matter. As long as you're being authentic to yourself and living in truth, all of those so-called benefits that you might hear that, oh, okay, now we don't have sleep problems now maybe some digestive problems have gotten better maybe now i'm not always thinking so much maybe i don't have anxiety now all of these so-called benefits will follow even without the realization that there is no self while you're being authentic and truthful and living your truth as this expression in this current period of time so you don't need to have this realization and you won't have this realization by just watching a ton of videos um, and having a one-on-one -on -one with someone is not about gaining anything you're not going to gain enlightenment or this realization through that um, you may have a glimpse you who knows anything can happen I mean it may happen but the purpose of those one-on-ones, at least the way I see it, is to ask questions that maybe you have in your mind that you want answered and you think that maybe there is some insight there that maybe somebody can share with you. But everything you have, you already, everything you need, you already have. There's nothing that anybody can really give you. 
The one-on-ones also are helpful with embodiment and realizing and just getting through things that are kind of difficult. Um, and I share that because I myself was not aware of any of these things when I was going through them. And I had to Google and try to figure out things on my own. And so the one-on-ones is to talk to someone who can kind of um, put things into context for you and what's happening and normalize some of these things that seem a little strange. That's what those are for. Um, and generally someone that's got a background in counseling like I do can help you through that. And there's psychologists and people that also specialize in those sorts of things. So that's what that's for. But you're not going to go to a one-on-one -on -one or watch a video or do this or that and have something happen like this. You are already that, okay? You are already what you're seeking. Everything that you want to know or have is already within you. So, some of these speakers put on all of these things, all of these events and things, and while it's entertaining, it's not necessarily going to do anything for you. So what my message is today is that what non-dual speakers and teachers aren't really sharing and talking about is that what you're looking for, you already are. If you would just be authentic to what you already are, that's all this is. That's all this is. And you know who you already are because when you get a feeling that you're doing something outside of what you authentically want to do, you get a feeling in your heart or you know somehow, okay, I'm just doing this. And this is maybe something playing in your mind. Just saying, I'm just doing this because this is what's expected of me. I'm just doing this because this is what I think sh people want me to do or whatever. But deep down, you know authentically who you are and what you really want to say and do. Be truthful to yourself. Speak the truth. Whatever it is that you're feeling and happening, whatever's happening with you, let that be expressed. That's what this is. Is complete freedom to be exactly who you are. It's a very paradoxical message because while on one hand we're saying there's no you and there's nothing to do, on the other hand, there is an expression that is appearing at this time and it is unique and it has different expressive features that maybe are not, you know, they're all different from each other even though it's the same ex same same ingredient through everything it's being expressed differently and it's wanting to be expressed differently not all selves are meant to have this realization not all selves are meant to have such a deep non-dual experience that they're living from a state of being a zombie or like a ghost or something like that that wouldn't be fullness Fullness is life. Fullness is activity, change, experiences, everything that life has to offer. That's fullness. If you're trying to escape life or fullness, you've gotten this wrong. That's not what this is. You may want to escape your problems. You may want to escape your, let's say, anxiety or mental illness of some kind. But that is is all just happening. And when you realize that you can just be authentic to whatever it is that is yourself, what you know about yourself and what you feel is yourself, once you start being authentic to that, all of those issues that you're speaking of will relax. And many of them will just fall away. So this isn't something that you can do, but you do know and you do experience your experience of whatever is happening we know who we are as this expression we know what we like our preferences don't like we like and don't like we know um what we stand for even if those beliefs are no longer seen as a valid or real or of any meaning we still carry beliefs i can't i can't say that 
after this realization, even though all beliefs fell away because they're seen as illusory, like they're not real, they don't mean anything, they're not important for anything, um, in the grand scope of things, nothing's happening. But, so I can't hang on to beliefs really anymore, like in, in a real serious way. But in life, um, speaking to my neighbors, speaking to my parents, doing whatever I do, I do still have beliefs and they're very, very similar to the beliefs I've, I held before I had this realization. Really nothing has really changed. I still, st I still stand for those things. Um, do I take them seriously? Do I start fights over it? Do I do all these things? No, because they're not seen as, as serious, but I still have on a scale, I still have things that I feel this way about more on this side. I feel more on this side about this issue. That still happens. Do I still feel like I have free will? Here and there, um, it may, may come in that I feel like I have free will. Um, I do feel that I'm free to do anything, but everything that's happening is just happening so it's it's all seamless it's it's seen as seamless but even if I felt that I was doing something it's still understood that I'm not really doing this but even if I felt that I was doing it I'm going to be authentic to myself and speak my truth and live my life how I feel like I should live it how I feel like this expression was meant to live their lives if I'm an introvert, I'm not going to push myself to be extroverted and do all these crazy things because that's not who I am. I'm going to be in line with what I am. And when that happens, all of those issues that you're trying to escape from just start to fall away and relax. So I know it's a lot of rambling and I don't know how clear sometimes these messages seem, um, but all I'm speaking about is that denying the self, denying the self and all of and denying existence, denying all of everything that is, is not everything. That's not where it ends. So even if you have this realization and you realize that everything is nothing, that everything is empty, that everything is an illusion and not really happening, even if you have that realization, that's not the end of the road. You have to have the other realization, which usually comes hand in hand, of fullness, of love, of acceptance. You have to have the other piece. Otherwise, you will become pretty much, like I say, a shell of yourself, a ghost. And it's not something that you're controlling, but it's something that I've observed you know, by watching um, and speaking to different people that are either had this realization or, or whatever, or they're, you know, they're on YouTube. So all of those things are going to happen how they happen. Okay. But you need to be authentic to yourself. So even if you've realized that everything is empty, examine yourself, examine your intuitive nature and what you feel and what, what's going on within you, you've realized that there's nothing. Is that the whole truth? Examine yourself. Is it true that that's all there is? Or are you experiencing something else? Are you experiencing the fullness? Are you experiencing love? Are you experiencing feeling like a person? If that's what you're experiencing, that's completely okay. You have to be truthful to your reality, whatever it is, whether it's that you're experiencing that you're a person, that you're self or not. If you're denying the self or denying that you feel like you have free will or something like that, then you're, you, you haven't realized anything and there's nothing really to realize, but I'm just speaking in the terms of being authentic to yourself. So when you have this realization, examine everything about it. 
just because some speaker lives completely in emptiness is that your experience and if it is your experience then great if it's not your experience live your reality that's where the liberation is when you live your truth when you live authentically to whatever your expression is that's what you're looking for so I hope that that makes a little bit of sense um, to you and I hope that um, whatever is going on with you that you will look at that reality not what you want to happen what is actually happening look at what's actually happening not what you want to happen not what you think this is there is no prescription there is no one way there is no one way to awaken there's not one awakened person that speaks exactly like the other or whatever it's all individualized so examine your personal reality and I know that sounds very paradoxical when you're speaking of a person or an experience but can you truthfully say that you don't feel individualized in a certain area after this realization everything becomes one it feels all connected and together it feels that way but it also paradoxically feels individualized here in this person because your direct experience is this is the center of your universe universe is right here whatever it is that you are and whatever reality you're going through that's what I'm speaking about that's what's happening your reality is what's happening so when these speakers are speaking about well what that's what's happening or all that's happening is what's happening um, this is it it's your reality that they're speaking of they're not speaking of it's only their reality it's only their um, experiences no they're not speaking about that they're speaking about whatever is happening that is all there is so whatever is happening in your reality that's all there is there's no one there there's no one doing it there's nothing you can do but it's happening and what is it what is it that's happening in your reality examine that and be truthful to yourself not denying that if you feel that you can make decisions if you feel that there is a body if you feel this that's your reality and that's what's happening it's not happening to anybody but that's what's happening so you must accept and be truthful to your reality so that's what I'm speaking of that I wanted to share that most non-duality teachers don't speak about um, and just something kind of just silly out there um, my parents were watching like a news channel and they were talking about like physical touch and just all this scientific evidence of how scientific touch you know holding each other's hands and stuff like that calms the person down and builds connection and stuff and then just something silly that they talked about was that every time um, that they found you know with the people that studied touch and all this stuff um, when you touch your face when you touch your arms things like that they said that the reason that humans do that is to um, confirm that they exist um, it's a subconscious thing that apparently humans touch their body every so often and it's subconsciously happening to um, to confirm to the mind that the person actually exists as a body because what we are is not a body it actually is not a body it's not localized really it feels localized that's what I'm saying if that's your reality that you're localized that's that's what we're speaking of but um, but yeah apparently we touch our own bodies every so often just to confirm that we exist according to science so that's just interesting you know all of this is just happening we are basically like machines or like scientific just uh, marvels that are just all just working and doing all of these things without anybody doing it and it's all perfect so I just wanted to share that with y'all um, if you have any questions or anything you can leave that down below for me 
Um, I have my email in the description box. I have my book in there. And um, if you'd like to sign up for a mailing list or anything like that, I'm going to go ahead and start that this week. Um, you can send me an email with your email if you would like to join that. And if you are new, like I say, or you like this sort of content, please subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for watching.